Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 17. Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains the following poems. Warren's Address to the American Soldiers, The Song in Camp, and The Bugle Song. Part 2 continued. Warren's Address to the American Soldiers. There is never a boy who objects to learning Warren's Address by John Pierpont, 1785-1866. To stand by one's own rights is inherent in every true American. This poem is doubtless developed from Robert Burns's Bannockburn. Stand! The ground's your own, my braves. Will ye give it up to slaves? Will ye look for greener graves? Hope ye mercy still? What's the mercy despots feel? Hear it in that battle peal. Read it on yon bristling steel. Ask it, ye who will. Fear ye foes who kill for hire? Will ye to your homes retire? Look behind you, there a fire. And before you see, who have done it? From the vale on they come, and will ye quail? Leaden rain and iron hail, let their welcome be. In the god of battle's trust, Die we may, and die we must, but oh, where can dust to dust be consigned so well? As where heaven its dew shall shed, on the martyred patriot's bed, and the rocks shall raise their head of his deeds to tell. John Pierpont The Song in Camp The Song in Camp is Bayard Taylor's best effort as far as young boys and girls are concerned. It is a most valuable poem. I once heard a clergyman in Chicago use it as a text for his sermon. Since then, Annie Laurie has become the song of the Labor Party. The song in camp voices a universal feeling. Give us a song, the soldiers cried, the outer trenches guarding, when the heated guns of the camps allied grew wearied of bombarding. The dark Redan, in silent scoff, lay grim and threatening under, and the tawny mound of the Malakoff no longer belched its thunder. There was a pause, a guardsman said, We storm the forts to-morrow, sing while we may, Another day will bring enough of sorrow. They lay along the battery's side below the smoking cannon, Brave hearts from Severn and from Clyde, and from the banks of Shannon. They sang of love and not of fame, forgot was Britain's glory, each heart recalled a different name, but all sang Annie Laurie. Voice after voice caught up the song, until its tender passion rose like an anthem, rich and strong, their battle-eve confession. Dear girl, her name he dared not speak, but as the song grew louder, something upon the soldier's cheek washed off the stains of powder. Beyond the darkening ocean burned the bloody sunset's embers, while the Crimean valleys learned how English love remembers. And once again a fire of hell rained on the Russian quarters, with scream of shot and burst of shell and bellowing of the mortars. And Irish Nora's eyes are dim for a singer dumb and gory, and English Mary mourns for him who sang of Annie Laurie. Sleep, soldiers, still in honoured rest, your truth and valour wearing. The bravest are the tenderest, the loving are the daring. Bayard Taylor The Bugle Song The Bugle Song by Alfred Tennyson, 1809-1890, to says Heydrich, has for its central theme the undying power of human love. The music is notable for sweetness and delicacy. The splendor falls on castle walls, and snowy summits old in story. The long light shakes across the lakes, and the wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes dying, dying, dying. O oh, hark, O oh, hear, how thin and clear, and thinner, clearer, farther going. O oh, sweet and far, from cliff and scar, the horns of Elfland faintly blowing. Blow, let us hear the purple glens replying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes dying, dying, dying. O oh, love, they die in yon rich sky, they faint on hill or field or river. Our echoes roll from soul to soul, and grow for ever and for ever. 
Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying, and answer, echoes, answer, dying, dying, dying. Alfred Tennyson End of section 17 Read by Kara Schallenberg on October 16, 2006 in Oceanside, California